Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to um, No Reaction. <laughs> We're actually talking about my giveaway, my K-pop giveaway today and doing a bit of a QA. and a um, So I will be doing a giveaway competition, um, which is in celebration of hitting 10K subscribers. I figured like every time I go up by 10K or something like that, um, I can do like some sort of a giveaway just to like give back to my subscribers because I like truly, truly appreciate your support and, um, you know, following me along this journey. It's been extremely fun. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to be doing, uh, as I said, a giveaway. All you need to do is comment on this video and tell me why you follow my channel. I'm going to be reading through every single person's comment. I'm going to make sure you guys actually subscribe to my channel and I'm going to be picking a winner from that who can win an album of your choice. So you can pick any K-pop album as long as it's like viable, as long as I can find it, um, as well as a whole bunch of different K-pop merch that I have already got here with me that I'm going to be chucking in. Um, so it'll be a fun little like K-pop goodie box as well as obviously the album that you guys, uh, that, that you really want to have. So as I said, all you need to do is comment on this video, like it, and tell me why you actually follow your channel. Like what made you subscribe to me? Because, you know, there's so many people out there whose YouTube videos you watch, but there's a reason why you decide to subscribe to them. So I'm curious. And I guess the reason why I wanted to make the giveaway based around that is because I'm really interested in what makes you follow me and um, what makes you interested in my journey and and all of that kind of stuff. So I thought that would be really fun to do. Now, moving on, we're going to do a little bit of a Q&A while I eat a snack. My snack is coconut yogurt with mango and honey, in case you were wondering. Um, so I literally only put this up yesterday. Uh, I put a status up on Twitter and on YouTube. I should really wait. I should have really like waited to get more questions, but there's like a whole bunch here. So I think like I've got more than enough to do this Q and A right now. Um, and if there's more questions that come through, I will do a second Q and A if you guys like this style of video. So the first question is actually not a question. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you. I came across your channel during a very stressful time in my personal life, watching your reaction videos, both here and on YouTube and on Patreon, both here on YouTube and Patreon to become a part of my daily routine. I sometimes even end up watching the same videos if I have nothing to do or if I'm going through a rough time. Thank you. I've never commented on a video slash it's that time of month. So I'm a bit extra emotional. Uh, it's almost 3am here in England. So I better get some sleep. That is so nice. Thank you so much um, for that beautiful comment. Like I love seeing comments like about how these videos can actually like somehow help someone in some way. Like it's actually wild to think about, but I'm really thankful. Um, okay. My, the next question is my question is, that do you have times when you don't want to film but have to? Uh, what do you do to overcome those times? And I just want to say that watching you literally calms me down so much. You're an amazing person. I love you. That's so nice. Um, yes, there have been definitely been times where I don't. It's not that I don't want to film, but like I've never I've never had a day where I'm like I don't want to film what I'm filming. But I've definitely had days where I'm like not feeling as like energetic I suppose like I think what people don't understand unless you do reaction videos is that strangely even though you're just sitting down it takes a lot of energy out of you and um sometimes even if like something is really interesting it's hard to concentrate if you are tired so I hate filming when I'm tired because I want to be like really interested and in, and like engaged in what I'm watching but if I'm tired it's like regardless of how interesting it is sometimes it's really hard so there's definitely times that I don't want to film, but I have to due to my like schedule uploads and things like that. But I guess the way that I overcome that is by like, sometimes I will uh, make shorter videos. So, uh, you know, my channel I think is known for having long hour long reactions and things like that. But as my channel has grown and as I've like somehow fallen to the schedule, like upload schedule of like uploading nearly every day, um, I can't always do long videos because I just don't have the energy at times. So I guess to overcome that, I just choose shorter videos and make my reaction around half an hour long. Um, and I guess also like something that I'm trying my best to allow myself to do is that if I don't want to film, 
don't. <laughs> and that's hard because especially Patreon, like, you know, people subscribe to my Patreon. Therefore, it is my duty to make sure that I am uploading when I say I'm going to upload. Otherwise, I feel really bad. But like, I think no one on Patreon, I'm just going to use Patreon as an example. No one on Patreon will care if I miss a day and I upload at another time. Like if I don't upload on the exact day, I'm going to say it and I it's the next day or whatever. No one's going to care. So I just have to remind myself of that. And everyone is so understanding. But yeah, it's it's definitely hard because I do so many videos, like 13 videos a week, plus a three to four hour live every Saturday, plus two VIP reactions for, per month. Um, it's a lot. I do a lot of filming and so it can get tiring for sure. Um, all right, next question, but I need to have a bite of this before. It's so good. I might not look at it, but trust me. All right. Hi, Mel. In the first place, I want to tell you uh, that thanks to your reactions, I feel less alone. And every time I finish watching a video of you, my mood gets better. So nice. Um, I wrote your message on Twitter and you kindly answered me. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. Uh, question. What kind of music do you prefer excluding the music world of K-pop? And which artists, groups or bands do you love? And finally... What do you think about the toxicity of fandoms? I don't understand why a person can't be a fan of a group or multiple groups without other fandoms criticizing and offending someone. Okay, great question. Okay, so let's not talk about K-pop. Outside of K-pop, my preferred music is more chill, um, acoustic-y kind of like vibes with like anything that I can sing along to. I've got a very va like vast like range of music taste, that didn't make sense, but you get what I mean. Um, like my music taste varies significantly, but I do tend to move towards that kind of indie folk, I guess, genre, acoustic indie folk genre. Um, so like I really, really love Bon Iver. I really love Florence and the Machine, London Grammar, um, Billie Eilish, um, Daniel Caesar, Eliana, Eliana Cass. I never know how to pronounce her last name. Um, who else? Uh, the Teskey Brothers are a more bluesy kind of uh, group. Ocean Alley. They're more like, I don't know how you would describe Ocean Alley. Um, how do you pronounce her last name? Eliana. Eliana? I always say Eliana, but maybe it's Elena. Elena Castillo. <laughs> I think I've been pronouncing her, wrong, her name wrong the whole time. Um, Ziggy Alberts. <laughs> I, I, like they're kind of like, I usually go onto their kind of playlists the most. Uh, and then bands, bands, I still really love bands like Paramore, Evanescence, uh, Killing Heidi, um, No Doubt. I don't listen to them as often though. Uh, what do I think about the toxicity of fandoms? I freaking hate it with a passion and it is the part of k-pop that I really thoroughly dislike like it's actually the reason why I don't react to a certain group um even though I thought I was going they, were, they would have been one of my main uh groups mostly because I don't want to bring certain posts and things up on my Twitter feed due to the algorithm if I'm always reacting to certain groups and posting them and anyway long story short I hate toxicity I try my best to stay away from it um it's why I don't really like to talk about a lot of drama and a lot of um you know certain events that may have gone down in the k-pop world like the controversy and all that kind of stuff and I try to keep it out of my channel because I hate it and um it ruins my experience of K-pop. So yeah, I don't understand why uh, people feel the need to tear down other groups just because they like one group. Like I always think about it with like Western artists. Just say I like Ariana Grande. I then can also like Beyonce and no one's going to say anything about it. <laughs> 
But why can, Why do people think that, like, for example, you can only like Ariana Grande and you can't like any other artist? Like, that doesn't happen in the Western pop culture world, does it? I feel like this is just a very K-pop related thing. I mean, I'm sure there's toxicity in, in the Western pop world as well. I just don't think it's as bad and I just don't, I don't understand it at all. And I think it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. But you know what? I think it like... <sighs> For people who feel the need to dive into toxicity, I, I've spoken about this in the past and I think it's like people like K-pop pulls you in to the point where like you become in a sense a little bit obsessed and not always in a bad way, but you become very attached to your groups, right? You love them so much because they give you so much of themselves. You feel like you know them. You feel like you're so close to them. Um, therefore, you create this bond. And a lot of the time, you know, we find these K-pop groups when we're in a very vulnerable place in our life and they help us overcome that. Therefore, the bond and the attachment that we have with these groups is runs so deep. Therefore, when you see someone say something negative about your group that you love, you sometimes feel the need to fight back and defend and attack anyone who tries to attack them. So like, I think there's two, there's two sides of the story. One is that there's just people who are really toxic and who probably need to reflect on their own lives and the person that they are. Um, and probably need to do a lot of work internally to figure out why they feel the need to try to belittle and dehumanize and put other people down. And then the other side of it is to realize that those kind of people are not worth fighting. And even though you want to stick up for your group, the people you love so much, how can you do that in a way that's not then doing exactly what these people are doing? You know, we defend by attacking, we defend by insulting. So how can you share what you want to share in a more positive and welcoming way that's not fueling the fire, so to speak, if that makes sense. <clears throat> but yeah, fan wars, uh, I have no time for them at all. No time. All right. Hi, Mel. Not really a question, but I've been following you since your very first Skiz reaction. And I wanted to say that you radiate such a good vibe and it was really soothing to watch you every day after I came back from uni. I really hope you have an amazing day and life. Sending you a big hug from Argentina. Thank you so much. That's really sweet. Uh, okay. Hey, Mel. My question is, when you first got into K-pop, uh, when, sorry, when you first got in, when you first got into K-pop, which slash how many groups you followed and what Maybe the question is, when did you first get into K-pop and then which and how many groups did you follow and what your K-pop journey as a whole was like before opening the channel? Okay, good question. Uh, before I got into K-pop, oh, sorry. I first got into K-pop maybe five years ago. Uh, I only followed BTS. Uh, I love BTS. I think they are absolutely amazing. I love all the members of BTS. They are in incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, so I, f I first found BTS because of like, I don't know, something popped up on YouTube. I watched it and I was like, oh, this is cool. I think it was Mic Drop or something. I had not listened to any K-pop before that. So I watched that one thing. And then obviously when you watch one video, other things get recommended. And I just slowly but surely kind of like fell into the rabbit hole of BTS. Um, at that stage of my life, I did not have time for anything else. So I just watched them. I never ever hated any other groups I didn't know anything about any other groups I just couldn't be bothered l l learning about anyone else so I only followed BTS and I was like yeah that's all I, I was not in the k-pop world though I just watched their stuff I didn't watch anything else related to k-pop so like I was very much on an outsider just focusing on one group um and then Maybe um, just before starting my channel, my friend started showing me some 80s stuff. Uh, and then along the journey of like things popping up on YouTube, I watched like certain clips of like Chan and Felix because they were Australian. And I was like, oh, there's Aussies in K-pop? Like, who are these guys? And so I, I knew who they were before uh, starting my channel. And I'd known like a couple of 80s songs before 
a oh, couple of AT songs. Yeah, a couple of AT songs before starting my channel. Um, and that's, they're the reason I started my channel because I was like, you know, I'm just starting this journey. I was obsessed with watching reactors, loved watching reactors. And I was like, I reckon I could do this. This could be fun. Um, so I was like, you know, I'm just starting my journey with 80s and, and Stray Kids. And why don't we just start filming? So started filming and yeah, the rest is history. Here we are. Um, it's been a very, very, very fun journey the last nearly a year now. Oh, not even actually. When did I start it? In February. So, you know, eight months. Eight months? Have I started my channel eight months ago? Should we look? How long ago did I start my channel? Um, but yeah, so I didn't, I didn't know any other groups before, before those. Oh, seriously? Why can't I do... Why can't I show my, I'm not going to scroll through all of my videos. Anyway, it's been about eight or nine months ago that I started my channel. Um, and yeah, I thought that I would like do like heaps of different groups all the time. I was like, you know, I want to get to know like all of these different groups. I'm going to do like multiple groups a week and or, or a week, like multiple groups throughout my time. And I've tried. <laughs> it's so hard. When I started my channel, I was doing like stray kids, 80s, stray kids, 80s, stray kids, 80s. And then I would like pop someone random in there. And now like I can't do stray kids and 80s back to back. So now I do just stray kids twice a week, 80s twice a week on YouTube. And then I do them both twice a week on Patreon as well. But even just doing like eight videos a week of those two groups, it's hard to fit other groups in. Like I'm really trying, but there's so many more groups I really want to dive into. Like I'm already reacting to like P1 Harmony, Monster X, X Extraordinary Heroes and following the journey of KQ Fellas um on YouTube and then I'm diving into 17 on Patreon as well but then I still have other groups and I'm like I wish I had the time to like jump into them more but it's just not possible it's so hard because if I want to dive into other groups I have to get rid of other groups or, or like videos that I'm like decrease the amount of videos I'm doing of certain groups I'm currently doing and I don't know how to do I don't know what to do with that like I don't want to do that so anyway all right next question Um, what are some things you feel pressured about as a reactor? Can you recall any specific moments that have made the potential stress from doing this worth it? Have you always been someone who is open to putting yourself out there as a public figure of sorts, um, at least on the internet, or did you grow more comfortable with presenting yourself through your experiences as a performer, coach, nutrition advocate, etc.? Good question. First question, what are some things you feel pressured about so what are some of the things you feel pressured about as a reactor? I feel pressured about posting every day. I think that might be it. <laughs> I was about to say this, but I didn't really believe it as I was thinking it. I was about to say I feel pressured to be entertaining, but I don't because I've never really... So like sometimes I think like to myself, should I be more expressive when I'm watching things? Like I think about it, like, you know, say I'll be having a shower one time and I'm like, okay, I'm going to record this tomorrow. And I'm like, do I need to be more expressive? Like, am I boring to watch? And then I'm like, you know, I don't want to be fake. And you already as a reactor, I have to verbalize more than what you usually would verbalize. Because when you're watching something, majority of the time you say it in your head, you don't really say it out loud. But as a reactor, we have to say everything out loud that's coming through our heads. So we're already reacting more than what we would in real life. To then try to do more is like be more expressive is then starting to become fake. And like if you have to be fake when you're reacting, then there's no point because what's it's not your true reaction. So I started to like at one point be like, oh, am, am I going to be like, is this boring? Like, are people going to stop watching me? But I'm like, I've, this is how I've been from the start. People subscribe to me. Those people like the way I react. Therefore, don't change who you are, you know? Um, obviously, the more I do this, the more comfortable I'll get. And when it's comeback season, that is when I'm watching a comeback MV my whole body goes into shutdown. I'm like, oh, this is so exciting. So like, you know, you get, you do have those moments where you're like, you can, you, that excitement is, is definitely true. And that only really happens for me at a comeback time, depending. Um, but the most things I feel pressured about is uh, filming every day, 100%. Sometimes 
like especially like my life is and I say this all the time like I'm so busy like I am honestly so busy I work two jobs I film every day like this is my schedule on a Monday which is today I film in the morning up until 11 30 and then I have my tut session like my tutor my Korean tutor session until uh 12 30 and then I go to work and I don't get home from coaching until 10 p.m Tuesdays I wake up and I go straight to work I'm in the office all day and then I have to train because I'm training for to qualify for a world title next week so I'll go to the gym get home maybe about 8 30 Wednesday again I film until about 12 and then I have to go straight to work not home from work until 8 p.m on Wednesday exactly the same schedule on Thursday and then uh Friday I'm in the office all day um and I'll be training oh and then sorry Monday so this morning I did a 6 a.m Pilates class Wednesday and Thursday I do 6 a.m Pilates class as well and then sun Saturday I do a live for like four hours and then I usually film more things if I'm behind um and then I'll go to the gym or I'll go to Pilates in the afternoon and then Sunday is my only day I don't do anything so usually that's the only day I get to spend with my boyfriend but sometimes I'll be like oh shit I need to do like a VIP reaction for for Patreons so I'll film that on a Sunday sometimes so it's just like I feel pressured to film every day but like it's just it is what it is I did that to myself like you guys didn't tell me to post every day I did that so it's my own pressure really <clears throat> Can I recall any specific moments that have made the potential stress from doing this worth it? Yes, I don't feel stress from doing this. I do feel pressure, but it doesn't stress me as much. But I, it's the comments from people telling me about how my videos, well, two things. One, about how, my video, how much they love my videos and like that, you know, these people may not have K-pop friends in real life. And when they watch my videos, it feels like they're watching with a friend. Like hearing all of those kind of things is really cool. Um, I've managed to bring people together who are like really good friends now. Um, that is like out of anything, I think that's the biggest thing that's worth it. Cause like the bonds that I've seen people create through finding each other through my channel is like so wholesome, so wholesome. Um, and lastly, like getting to know these groups has changed my life. Absolutely changed my life. They have brought so much joy and perspective and like just pure happiness into my life that I didn't necessarily experience this much before. Um, having a whole community of people under me who are supporting me and watching my videos with me and commenting every day. Like it's absolutely the most amazing feeling and I'm so grateful. So it's really cool. Have I always been someone who's open to putting yourself out there as a public figure of sorts? Or did I grow more comfortable with presenting myself through my experience as a performer, coach, nutrition advocate, etc.? I've always been very confident, um, but I have also been performing from a young age. So it's really hard to say whether it my comfortability in putting myself out there was because of just who I am or because of my experience as a performer, as a coach. I think it's probably a combination. Even though I'm actually introverted, I am extremely confident. I am confident, maybe not, is not the word I can use, comfortable. I'm comfortable starting a conversation with anyone, um, getting the party started, so to speak. Not that I'm a party person, but like if we're around a bunch of people, I like to bring the mood up. I'm happy to be the center of attention. Um, it doesn't bother me in that way. And I think that part of me is probably from performing my whole life. Uh, and competing and having to be judged and just being confident with getting judged. Um, and I've also like, I used to have my own podcast. I used to do nutrition seminars. So I guess it is experience of being in front of people and all of that. But I think like doing reaction videos, there's not much pressure. I guess there is pressure putting yourself out there. I think that's why I'm very cautious in like making sure that I'm like just being a good person, you know, making sure that I'm like, it, like expressing myself in a way that I feel proud of being nice being supportive saying things that are not rude or like insensitive and all those kind of things so yeah um okay how have your initial goals for your channel evolved in the past year do I have any new goals I don't think I ever had a goal for my channel <laughs> um <laughs> My new goal is to get to 100K. If I just superficially looking at the numbers, I'd love to reach 100K subscribers. 
do I really care about that? No, though. <laughs> like, I literally just thought of that off the top of my head. Like, when I'm thinking about, like, this is the goals for my channel. Yes, let's get to 100k. Like, that would be so cool. But I, I've never actually set any goals for my channel. So maybe I should set some goals for my channel. I don't know, actually. I'm going to... I'm going to have to set some goals for my channel. I think if I think back to like goals that I haven't necessarily thought thought about writing down, but have always been in the back of my mind, it would be um, to always have a channel where people feel comfortable to come to. They feel welcomed and they feel heard and seen. And I genuinely mean that because I, I still write back to nearly every comment. Um, that I get on my videos. I, the past week, I haven't been able to go through comments as much, but I will go back. But I try my best to either like or reply to nearly everyone's comments so that people feel like when they come to my channel, they can share how they feel about what I'm watching and know that I'm going to see it, hear them, understand them, um, which I think is something that I've not experienced with other reactors. And maybe sometimes you'll get that. And I'm not saying that no one does it. I'm just saying that I haven't experienced it yet. I will write this, you know, I used to write these big comments and then I'm like, oh, I wonder if they've ever seen it. Like, I wonder if like, you know, the time that I spent writing this comment was worth actually sending it or if they're just not going to read it. So I really try to make people feel like really welcomed when they come to my channel. So I think that's maybe a goal that I always kind of had or like a, a benchmark that I always wanted to keep is that people feel comfortable watching my videos, coming here, being heard, being seen to feel like they have that friend when they watch K-pop content. <clears throat> Will I ever share a full video of one of my gymnastics routines? Maybe. I don't have a video of some of them. I don't have a video of like mm, the, my favorite ones though. <sighs> I'll definitely be sharing, well, it's not really gymnastics, it's sport aerobics. That's what I'll be competing in next year. Um, I'll definitely be sharing that routine for sure. And I'll share the journey along the way. So just make sure you follow me on Twitter. Will I vlog my first Stray Kids concert experience? I don't have to, as it may be a hassle, but would definitely like to see your post-concert experience. Have I already planned my outfit for Stray Kids concert? No, I haven't planned my outfit. I need to do that. And yes, I am 100% vlogging my experience. I'm going to four shows. So I'm going to vlog my experience. And then on one of the shows, I'm going to take fan cams, like proper fan cams of every performance. Maybe. I don't know how, if that's going to be super annoying for me, but we'll see. But I will definitely share... Definitely share my experience as a vlog. Okay, uh, next question. As one of your first 100 subscribers, thank you, Molly. Um, I know that you are a performer as well and you are so talented. Thank you. Before the competition, how many hours per day do you practice and what do you eat? Uh, how many hours a day? Okay, I haven't competed in a couple of years, so I'll go back to how many hours I competed, uh, I trained before my last competition. Um, maybe 20 to 25 hours we would train I would train uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for four hours with my team and then two hours on each day individually so yeah 20 plus hours uh, what do you eat? I am a plant based eater so I don't eat meat or chicken um, I don't eat chicken or red meat I eat eggs and fish, but I'm mainly plant-based. So, um, for example, it, when I'm in competition mode, breakfast will either be um, like oats with like berries and um, like chia seeds and hemp seeds and things like that, or it will be uh, eggs and avocado on toast on like sourdough bread or like peanut butter and banana on sourdough bread. Uh, and then I so my snacks are usually something like coconut yogurt and fruit or like a healthy protein bar. Um, lunches are usually like some kind of like a, like a rice with like tofu and veggies or like, um, like a really big salad filled with like heaps of greens, veggies, or I always usually have tofu. Sometimes I have tuna. Depends. And then, um, when I'm trying to cut for competition, when I'm trying to get really lean, not that we get super lean, but when I'm trying to look more athletic, I usually just cut out all my carbohydrates at nighttime only. So I'll have either like protein and water with like some steamed veggies and something or I'll have um, just like steamed veggies and like some grilled fish. So I usually won't 
have carbs at night time, but I have lots of snacks and I'm, I make sure I eat a lot. My main thing is to focus on macronutrients. So protein, carbs, and fat at every meal, apart from when I'm trying to get a bit leaner, I would just cut my carbs only at nighttime. Um, and then I'll try to have my dinner super early and just drink a shitload of water. Okay. As a performer, teacher, mentor, have lived a very active life and so much more since you were a kid. How were you able to cope emotionally and mentally while transitioning and exploring a new phase in your life now that you are much older and have much more control? Was this too much? <laughs> Good question. Um, I really struggled as a performer when I was younger because I suffered from an eating disorder. So it was really hard. I was like training as an elite athlete, um, working full time at the gym and then going to uni full time. Um, it was really hard for me and my mental health really suffered. As I'm getting older, it's a really good question. I don't know emotionally and mentally how I cope with new phases in my life, but um, I've always been really big on journaling and really big on listening to my body. And um, like my whole life before, before Reactor was working as an eating psychology coach and it was all about understanding your psychology in relation to your health um so when I had an eating disorder as I was kind of like uh recovering from my eating disorder I studied eating psychology and the impact of our brain and our neurological pathways on um our behaviors and and all of that and as well as like you know just overall health and nutrition and gut health and stuff like that so all of that interlinked is like such a whole experience because your psychology and your health affects literally everything when you're transitioning being able to understand your emotions throughout that transition and what your body needs and how your body shifts because what worked for you at one point then doesn't work anymore so how do you work through that and so the biggest thing I do is journaling and meditation a lot of the time especially when I'm filming going from this to that and this to that I feel very up in my head and very like spacey and I can feel that. I know when I'm not really like that present. And so it, all it could take is me to go down to the beach, sit on the sand for 10 minutes and just like breathe for me to like almost get like back into my body to then be able to easily or in like the most gentlest way transition through whatever I'm going through. Uh, so at the moment, like it's, it's still a little bit of a struggle doing like two jobs trying to get back into my training for competition and filming. Um, and I know that. So this past weekend, I really sat down and had to think about like what part of my life is struggling right now? What part of my life needs a little bit of a rejuggle? Um, and the best way emotionally I deal with that is through like writing down everything that I feel so I can see it on paper because when you take it out of your head and you can see something on paper, you can address that and make changes to that as if you're giving advice to someone else. Cause you know how, like, I feel like you can always give advice to someone else, but when it comes to yourself, it's, it's like you forget everything. So when you write something down on paper, you can almost like come up with a solution because it's like you're telling someone else. So um, that's what I do. Anytime I'm going through a new transition, anytime emotionally, I'm not dealing with something. I just write it all down, ground myself, figure out what I need to do. And majority of the time you'll come up with a really good solution. <clears throat> Okay, have I ever thought about doing reactions to girls groups? Yes, I have done many reactions to girls groups over on my Patreon lives. We do uh, girl group reactions on my Patreon lives every single week. So you can check them out over there. Um, what's my favorite movie slash TV show? I don't know. I don't know. That's a really good question. I couldn't answer that. <laughs> I'm a, like, I love romance. So I love a lot of romantic movies. And one of my favorite movies I've forgotten the name of, Shock Horror. It's like one where, I don't know. Anyway, I'll, I, I'm not going to be able to remember it off the top of my head. But um, any kind of romantic r movie I absolutely love. Um... I also really, really love Blue Crush. Blue Crush is my go-to. I, I can watch that a thousand times. Um, TV shows. <sighs> Breaking Bad. I really loved Breaking Bad. 
Ozark. I really loved Ozark. I love any show with like a really good storyline. So I don't know because I don't really watch a lot of movies or TV shows because <laughs> I'm just reacting when I'm not reacting about work. So I'll think about that and I'll come back to it. Um, when and how did I get into K-pop B BTS? I kind of already answered that one, I think, above. Above? I mean, earlier. Um, I'm in interested in your daily routine because I know how you have two jobs and you do YouTube and Patreon videos and you do them like an hour long or more and it's not just one group but more. Yes, I also study Korean and somehow you managed to have a boyfriend. I do. And you don't know how you do it all. And like, what do you love doing in your free time when you're not filming? Okay, I, I feel like I also answered my schedule earlier on my days. Um, I don't know how I do it all and my relationship definitely suffers because he, my boyfriend works six days a week. So he works on a Saturday um, and he works in the day. I work in the night. So like apart from my two office days, but then I go to the gym straight after. So we see each other. He's usually asleep sometimes when I get home and he's gone before I wake up. And then, so we have Sundays together and that's it. Which it's hard. Um, I don't know how I do it. I just kind of do it. And I make like non-negotiables. So I give myself like, this is how much time I have to film. I can't go over that. You know, like this is all the time I have. That's why sometimes in a reaction, you'll hear me say, um, I'm a little bit time poor today. So this is all I have time for. Like that's because it's my non-negotiable. I could probably push it a little bit more. Maybe I could add another 20 minutes, but that means something else is going to suffer. So I give myself very strict guidelines of you film from this hour to this hour. If you happen to go to Pilates in the morning and then you're chatting to the person after and then maybe you've got to get some groceries on the way home and you get home a little bit late. Well, unfortunately, then my videos are going to suffer because I don't have I don't go above or beyond. This is what I film in my day and that's it. I have to go to the gym. I have to do my workouts. So like just about making non-negotiables. Sundays is my time with my boyfriend and that's that, you know, like it's like this is you just have to make it that like this is what I'm doing and this is how I'm doing it. If I say I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to go to the gym. If I say I'm going to go do this, I'm going to go and do this. Like you just have to be like my Korean lesson today. It's in 20 minutes. Probably have to wrap this up. Um, it's in 20 minutes and like I could cancel it and film, keep filming this video for a little bit longer, but it's my non-negotiable. So I think that's like, you know, I've got a very busy lifestyle. So I just have to make sure that I'm not sacrificing um, or like, you know, making sure I'm just sticking to what my plan is for the week. Um, okay, I'll answer a couple more because there's some on Twitter and then I'm going to wrap it up so I can get ready for my Korean lesson. But I'll definitely do uh, a second one of this. If you guys have any more questions for me, you can write them down, a comment in here. Maybe not comment in here because this is also my... Oh, no, you can comment in here. You can comment in here. All right. <laughs> this question. If you only had to pick one group that you would stand forever, is it going to be Stragos or 80s? It's Stateys. <laughs> favorite place I've traveled to Japan 100% I've just had the best experience what would my bias tier list be Changbin is my alt bias and then I'm not gonna rank them I'm not gonna rank everyone else from there but this band is number one out of everyone right now um and then I have so many like biases underneath it but I don't want to say like who's above who because maybe I'll think about it but I feel like, what's the point? I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> what has been the most cultural shocking thing slash most shocking thing you found out about each group you stand and watch so far? I don't think anything. Because like, I think when I got into BTS, I was very shocked at how touchy-feely they were. And I'd never experienced that before. L growing up in Western cultures, guys aren't really like that. So that was probably the first most culturally shocking thing. I was like, they hold hands. They sit on each other's lap. What? <laughs> and so once I got used to that, nothing else has really shocked me because they're all touchy-feely. Everyone loves each other. Everyone's sitting on each other's lap. Every group's holding hands. Like it's not a shock anymore. Most shocking thing I found out about stray kids is how self-produced they are. I think that was, I was like, whoa, when I first found that out. <clears throat> um, 80s, most shocking thing. 
maybe their performance ability, like genuinely cannot sometimes believe that what I see. <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. I, I don't think there is anything that I can think of that's like really shocked me. Okay, um, how much time do I have? Also, oh wait, let's start with the first one. I'm curious about this. Since you've started your own YouTube channel and after all the groups you've now freshly discovered, how's your music taste changed and how are you feeling about all these great talents out there? Would you wish you'd stand them earlier? Oh my God, yes. I wish I stand them earlier. Um, my music taste has heavily changed. There, was, there would be no way in the world you would get me listening to this stuff, this stuff, to K-pop earlier in my journey. Like there are so many songs that I think like, I only like now because I am now accustomed to the K-pop sound and like it's just insane like I've really my taste in music has 100% changed I never used to like listen to a lot of pop-ish songs like really happy or very intense like I didn't really listen to this kind of stuff but now I'm like this is the best song I've ever heard like my I don't know how it's changed but it's just somehow changed and I don't remember when it happened but it happened and yeah I definitely wish I'd stand them earlier um I think I haven't asked you this before but what's the song or songs that always makes you emotional or even cry like a baby and what's the bops that always makes you want to dance and lift up your move mood whenever you hear them hmm I don't know I think maybe, hmm, let's see, shall we? Maybe makes me cry. I think, I don't know if there's many songs that make me cry though. <laughs> songs that have made me cry in the past. Um, BTS is the truth untold, the truth untold. I think it was the truth untold. Um, I, the first time I heard that, I thought it was amazing. Um, oh, no, it was your eyes tell. It was your eyes tell. Hmm. <sighs> be with you. Like, I'm going to say be with you from ATs, but I don't know if it makes me cry, but I feel like the first time I listened to it, it may have made me cry, but it doesn't make me cry anymore. I just love it. Thank you, I think made me tear up when I heard about what was what it who it was for, but it doesn't make me cry anymore. You know. Um Holla Holla will always lift up my mood and always make me bop. Aurora always makes me bop. Um Aurora from One Wee also makes me very, very happy. Maybe your ocean hoppy polar makes me a bit emotional at times. Mm. For stray kids, I'm going to say, um, <gasps> actually for stray kids, Lonely Street, oh, Waiting for Us makes me emotional sometimes. Um, and then uh, Dang always makes me dance. Case 143 now, you cannot listen to that without dancing a uh, gorilla 100% always going to make you feel happy I don't know this is hard because like like if you guys watch my reactions anytime a song's playing I'm like oh yeah oh yeah but I don't think there's many emotional songs I don't think I get like it's very rare that I get emotional over listening to a song it's more the visuals that I see with it like if I see someone singing it and I can see in their face that they are singing with a lot of emotion, I'll usually get emotional. All right. Um, also, knowing your love for all the groups you're reacting to and now loving them with your whole heart, I'm wondering if you'd ever have the chance to meet them. Is there anything you'd love to ask them or just let them know how they've changed your life in some ways? This is really good questions, but it's kind of questions I have to really think about. Mm. Yeah, so for Chan, <clears throat> I would want to ask him if he could go back in time, would he choose a different path? Because 
knowing the stress and regardless of how successful they are and they're becoming, is it worth it or would he want to go back and even though even if he loves his life now, if he could live it again, would he just allow himself to live a quote unquote normal life? Because I've just I've said this in, in the past, like I wonder if it's enjoyable. Because I'm sure there are many moments where he's like so thankful and loves it. But I wonder what the percentage of happiness to stress is. Um, whether I would actually ask him that or not, I don't know. <laughs> but I want to ask him that, but I don't know if I would ever ask him that. Um, I would let them know as well, so with stray kids in particular, that um, like I've never felt. Like they allow me to feel a connection to them that is hard to match at times. I feel very connected to them. And I've said this before. I don't know if it's just because there's two Australians. I don't know why that makes a difference, but it does to me. I think it's like the familiarity of the the accent and it's this whole K-pop world that's so different to like what I know. But then there's people who sound like me and it's just a weird thing, you know? So, um... They've really made me enjoy this journey on a whole new level. Like I really thoroughly have enjoyed this journey because of the type of people that they are. Uh, so like I often think about different ways that like, you know, Chen says things to us about how we think about like, you know, the way we speak to people and the way we hold them, so ourselves. And um, it really makes me think about how I respond to things and how I approach things. Like there's been many times where I've seen someone's comment on Twitter and I just want to like – really share my deep thoughts and I think about like imagine if Chan saw that and like you know he's always telling us like stay out of it just you know be the bigger person um so he's really changed me in that sense um and they all I mean Changbin has just shown me a love <laughs> that I never knew existed in my heart like they all do they absolutely all do um that AT is like I would love to know how many hours a week they train and what their training schedule looks like. Like, what do they do when they exercise? Um, what do they do when, they, when they're doing, like, dance practices? Like, how many hours are they practicing to get that good? Do they train facial expressions? Do they, um, do they like, like, how many hours are you guys putting in? Like, what's, what specific training are you getting to be able to perform in the way that you guys perform um and maybe like what is their favorite thing about like being an idol like what's something maybe that they didn't expect to happen or expect to learn and something that they that they really maybe don't like and like taking away like the fan walls and the no privacy like I'd just be interested to know like for both of these groups and these are just the two groups I'm focusing right now but you guys know I love so many other groups but they're just coming to mind right now like what is it like being an idol like what what's the journey like what do you what do you do every day when you guys have like interviews and stuff are they all on one day or are you going like an interview this day interview that day I want to know what their weekly schedule is like how many days are you training what type of training are you doing how many hours a week do you guys train as a group what is the specific focus when you train as a group um like what other things are you doing? Do you still get singing lessons? Like, are you still getting dance lessons? Like, do you get performance lessons? Like, I want to know these type of things, you know? Give me your specifics. Okay. Last question. I think I kind of answered this though. If you ever, if you were ever given the chance to interview ATs or Stray Kids, what would be the main question you would like to ask them? Yeah. I don't know. I'm actually going to think of this. I'm going to think about this question because what I just said might not be what I actually, if I was given the chance, what would I actually say? So I'm going to think about this and I'm going to do a follow up on it. But like, even like with other groups and stuff, like I'd have so many questions. Like if I could interview KQ fellas too right now, I have so many questions for them. Like, how are they feeling? What are their focuses? What is their sound? Like what sound do they want to portray? What sound are you hoping to do? With extenary heroes, like same question for them. Like what sound are you guys wanting to go for? Because what when they cover stuff and when they release stuff, it's not a same it's not the same uh genre. It's kind of slightly different. So what's their sound? What are they loving? <sighs> so many questions. 
Okay, let's do a follow up. So I need two things from you guys. One, if you want to win my K-pop giveaway, you need to comment down below why you guys follow my channel. What are you loving about my channel? And if you have any more questions, I can do a follow up video, which could be really, really fun. Um, and I'm going to think about there was a couple of questions in here that I feel like I want to answer a bit better because I feel like they're questions that I really need to think about. Um, so I'm going to come back with answers to those. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I need to get ready for my Tudor lesson now. I hope this wasn't too boring. Uh, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.